for the Neo-Assyrian period, we can observe a considerable number of administrative offices who were concerned with foodstuffs. I distinguish here between kitchen managers who presided over food-related professions, chief cook, food managers who were concerned with a specific foodstuff, wine master, and grain managers who were in charge of storage facilities for grain and grain products. From among these officials it is primarily the kitchen managers who, as their titles reveal, were attached to a specific institution or administrative sphere. Hence, apart from the royal household also close relatives of the king, crown prince, queen, king's mother, provincial governors, temples, and cities could have their own kitchen managers, by contrast, the managers concerned with one specific commodity lack any such qualification, with the exception of a wine master who is of the new house which is presumably to be identified with an annex to a palace or a distinct palace department. The remaining food managers, apart from the house of the queen, are never identified as a member of the household of a key member of the royal family, a provincial or a temple household. Only the affiliations of the granary masters or chiefs of granaries show that they were active in Nineveh, in the city of Maganuba, and in the land of Burtu. Although we are dealing here with only a few references in total, the distribution of the known affiliations appears nevertheless to be significant, even more so if we take into account the approximate date of the references. Hence, the majority of food managing offices is already attested in the first half of the 8th century, while individuals explicitly affiliated to temples occur from the reign of Sargon II onwards. The food managers working for key members of the royal family are only known for the 7th century, when the establishments of these royals seem to have expanded considerably. Also, the reference to the wine master of the new house stems from a legal record dating from the reign of a Sir Banipal or later. Based on the fact that the earliest datable attestation of a food manager qualified as of the palace points to the reign of Sargon II, a time when also the other institutional affiliations are attested for the first time, one might conclude that at the latest in the second half of the 8th century the kitchen managers were no longer restricted to the royal household, and their number increased further in the 7th century. However, since we lack substantial data from before the second half of the 8th century, and it is likely that large establishments such as the Or Temple were staffed with kitchen managers already in early Neo-Assyrian times, this observation is to be treated with caution. Still, the absence of comparable qualifications for officials concerned with one specific type of foodstuff, including grain, is significant and it seems that these men were usually only active in the royal household, either as a single representative of their office or as one among multiple office holders, as in the case of the chiefs of granaries who were assigned to different places from the reign of Adadnarari III on. The wine master of the new house from late Neo-Assyrian times is perhaps an indicator of a continuous process of specialization within the royal household due to its increase in size and complexity over the centuries. As a consequence of the food managing offices having more than one representative at a time, within or in addition to the royal household, we have to reckon with a hierarchical formation of holders of the same office, headed by the main office holder of the royal household. The comparably high density of kitchen managers employed in different spheres is likely due to the fact that institutional households were equipped with facilities for the processing and preparation of food that were staffed with skilled personnel such as cooks, confectioners, and brewers. The larger these facilities were and the more personnel they deployed, the higher is the likelihood that individuals were chosen from among them to preside over their professional section. Hence, at first sight these people might be regarded as, for instance, the chefs de cuisine, as their titles suggest. However, the reality was different, the chief cook and the chief confectioner of the royal household do not seem to have been occupied in the palace kitchen and the palace confectionery respectively, but rather they organized the foodstuffs that were needed by the working cooks and confectioners. In the case of the cooks this involved the meat of domestic animals, and in the case of confectioners they were occupied with fruits and spices. With the chief cook this developed to such an extent that he was responsible for the general management of livestock, whether needed for sacrifices, consumption, or work as draft animals. The chief cook even became eponym in the year 620, a function which was usually reserved for high state officials but was fulfilled also by some court officials in late Neo-Assyrian times. The other types of kitchen managers do not occur in particular connection with the royal household, nor do they seem to have developed a similar degree of abstraction and complexity, they were more hands-on. 
As far as one can tell from the sources, the chief baker, the chief brewer, and the chief oil presser seem to have borne responsibility primarily for the preparation and provision of bread, beer, and oil, mainly sesame oil, rather than for the organization of the ingredients needed. Also, the discrepancy between the literal meaning, chief oil presser, and oil master, supports the impression that the latter managed the acquisition, storage, and distribution of oil and that chief oil presser, as head of the oil pressers, was liable for the productivity of the oil pressing craft and may have even worked as an oil presser himself. Likewise, the storage of grain, which was central for the chief baker's and the chief brewer's work, was the responsibility of the chief of granaries and the Rab Danibati. One would also assume a similar distribution of responsibilities between the fruit master and the spice master, on the one hand, and the chief confectioner on the other hand. They all occur in the same administrative document recording allocations of tribute to court personnel thus, they were active at the same time. Judging by the developed state of the office of chief confectioner, he was perhaps responsible for the acquisition of fruits and spices needed by the confectioners, while the two food managers managed the same commodities for other uses, such as raw consumption or the manufacture of perfumes. Although this is highly speculative, the responsibilities of the kitchen managers and the other food managers, in any case, to a certain extent complemented each other.